hope you're having a great week. This video we're going to call Refined in the Fire. And when you think about refining in the fire, you obviously think about gold, right? And how we take this gold concentrate or whatever it might be, and we melt it down and the impurities are burned off or taken away, right? And all you're left with is the gold, the important stuff, the pure stuff, right? And how that's how God works in our life. That's what God wants. He only wants the pure stuff in our life. Right? And everything else is going to be burned up. It's worthless. right? And that's kind of what we're talking about today. But let's read, uh, start by reading in Philippians 2.12. In the second part of the verse, Paul says this. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And that's two parts to that. He says, work out your own salvation. You see, we shouldn't be going around trying to work out other people's salvation. We shouldn't be going around saying, hey, you know, you're saved, so this is what you have to do. This, this is, you know, you, should, you need to stop doing this and this and this. It says work out your own salvation, right? Don't work out somebody else's. Many times new Christians or even people that have been saved for a long time are turned off by people working out other people's salvation. And even people that are not saved are turned off from God for this very reason. Because they see where that person's going saying, you're wrong in doing this. But then they go and do the same thing themselves. They see the hypocrisy, right? Or whatever it might be. And it turns them off from God. And maybe they're saved and they stop wanting to go to church. You see, we go to church not to work out other people's salvation. But to remember that we're not the only ones with this problem. There's a whole world that has the same problem. To encourage others. Not to discourage others, right? And I was talking to a friend this last weekend. He was talking about AA and how he goes to AA and how, you know, you go into AA and you're, them other people ain't there to fix you. They're not there to fix you. It has nothing, their job has nothing to do with fixing you. In fact, they are discouraged to do that. They're discouraged to say, don't drink here, don't drink there, right? Your sobriety is yours. It's for you to work out, right? It's for you to choose. And if you do it or not, it's going to be because of you. Seems kind of selfish, but, you know, it's the same as Christian being, you know, salvation. Work out your own salvation. And it's because of this. If I relied upon someone else for my salvation or sobriety or whatever it might be, they're going to let me down. They're going to fail me. If you relied on me, I'm going to fail you, right? I'm going to let you down. I'm going to discourage you, right? You don't want me in charge of your salvation. You don't want me in charge of your sobriety, right? You got to have it. You have to be, you have to own that stuff. It has to be about you, right? God's relationship, salvation is not with other people to get to you. His relationship, his salvation is personal between you and him and no one else, Right? So work out your own salvation. And then it says, with fear and trembling, meaning this, right? Same way we read the Bible. When we look at it, we might read a passage and we say, oh, I don't understand. Should I go out and tell somebody they're doing it wrong? Well, does it follow these two things? Or this one thing, really? Does it follow who God is and God's heart? God tells us that he's love. That's his heart. He loves others. He loves people. Is it right is it righteous? Is it who he is? Does it follow his heart? Is it loving toward others? That's how we look at the Bible, and that's how we work out our salvation, right? And God works it out in us. We go to church, and we might be convicted, and sometimes you think, oh, I hate going to that church because every time I go, I'm convicted. Or something. Well, it's, hopefully it's not the pastor pointing you out saying, hey, you should be doing it. Hopefully, the pastor's reading the Bible and you're convicted by the fact that you're doing something wrong, that God's convicting you. You see, it says that God chastens those he loves. If, he ain't, if you ain't being convicted, you might be in the wrong place. You might not even be saved, right? That could be a problem. You gotta ask yourself that. Did you just find somewhere that says what you want so you're not convicted? You might be in the wrong place. Okay, and you need to fix that. It ain't my job to fix it for you. It ain't my job to tell you you need to fix it. I gotta worry about me, right? It's kind of selfish, but it's the truth. 
And, you know, Jesus, he was asked what the most important command was. And he gave this answer. He said, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God. Put him first. He's most important. Put him where he belongs, right? Have no other gods before him. You know, put him as number one. And then love your neighbor as yourself. And you might say, well, that's, I'm not going to do very good at that because I don't love myself that much, right? Do you really? Do you really not love yourself that much? You say, well, I'm depressed. I'm suicidal. I'm whatever. I don't love myself. Let me, let's, let me ask you this. Why are you depressed? Is it because your situation in life? Is it because of things building up in your life that you can't deal with? Is it the fact that you look at all the bad things or the bad things are reminded to you all the time about your life? See, it's not about the people that you're depressed. It's about your situation, your life. Yeah, you might not feel good about yourself, but it's about you because you love you. You see what I'm saying? And if, if that's the case, right? You see, you don't go to other people. You don't rely on other people. You go to God. You pray to God. You, you read God's word. You ask him, hey, take care of this. There's only one that should be involved in you know, your sobriety, your, your, your salvation, your sanity, your mental state, right? And that's Jesus Christ, because he's the only one that ain't going to let you down. He's the only one that ain't going to fail you. You rely on anything else, it's going to fail you. It's going to let you down, right? And many times Satan, that's his, that's his weapon, right? He puts these things and just keeps on putting these memories in your mind of bad things. And he makes it so you can't even see the good. But God has so much good for you, right? You got to put your eyes on him. When Peter stepped out of the boat, he started sinking when he took his eyes off Jesus. And that's how we are, too. If you're depressed, I'm not saying it's easily controllable when it comes. But your reaction, hopefully, is that you go to Jesus every time. And it might come a lot. You might have to read a lot of scripture. You might have to pray a lot. But he's able to heal. I know he is. He's able to heal this disease or whatever you, it might be, right? He's able to fix it. But he might not do it the first time. He might not do it the second time. But trust me, he's faithful to do it. Let's read, um, go on and read another scripture. It's 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 15. It says, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ, or which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's works will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's works. Of what sort it is, if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as though as through fire. And so we look at this and we say, okay, there's only one foundation to build on. And truly, there's only two places you can build. You can build on Jesus Christ or you can build on the other. Right? There's, no, there's two options. Build on Jesus Christ or build on whatever you're building on. Right? That thing that's going to let you down, the thing that's going to fail. And then it says some build with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. What are you building with? Are you building with gold? Are you building with pure stuff? Or are you building with like hay and straw? Maybe you got an igloo. Right? Is it going to survive the fire? probably won't right and what are we talking about we're talking about what is your reasoning for doing what you're doing what is your reasoning for coming to God is it because you just don't want to go to hell or is it because you want a relationship with Jesus Christ see that's pure if you just don't want to go to hell but you want nothing to do with Jesus I'm sorry but you're not saved it's about a relationship with Jesus Christ, believing on him, believing on him, putting your faith in him, right? It's a relationship, 
right? And then what do you do after that? Do you go out and be nice to people because you want to be seen and you want to be praised as being holy and right? Or you do it because God lives inside you and because you love him, right? Do you do it from a pure place where it's about Jesus that has nothing to do with you? That's what they're talking about. When the day comes, it's going to be tested with fire. And the things you did for yourself, they're going to be burned up. And all that's going to remain is the things that were pure. But it says one more thing here. It says, well, first it says, um, the fire will test each one's work, right? And if it endures, it will, he will receive a reward. But if anyone's work is burned, meaning there's nothing left but the foundation, all the building is gone. All that's left is the foundation because the foundation ain't going nowhere if it's on Jesus Christ. If all that's left is the foundation, he will suffer loss of the building. He won't get no reward for it. It will mean nothing. It won't be there no more. It'll be impure. It'll be gone. It was worthless. But he himself will be saved. You see, our salvation is not relying upon our works and what's behind our works. It's only relying on, did we choose Jesus Christ or not? Did we build on Jesus Christ or did we build on something else? Did we build on a want just not to go to hell? Did we build on, I got to be a Christian to be married to this person? Did we build on, my parents were Christians. You see them things? Them things are going to burn up because they're, they're not pure. They're not even true. And then whatever you build... If you build it pure, it will remain. But if you build it out of a, I just want to look good, it's going to get burned up. And in the end, we'll have either have a house or maybe even just a corner post. I don't know. Maybe a, a back porch. That's it. Maybe just, you know, a bathroom, a toilet in the middle of nothing. Maybe that's all that's left. But as long as it's on that foundation of Jesus Christ and his grace in our life, we will be saved. We will spend eternity with Jesus. You see, it's by what he did on the cross that we're saved. Not by what we do in any way. That's why we have to work out our own salvation. That's why we don't go work out other people's salvation. Because then we put a burden on them. Where it becomes like, well, if you're not doing this, you're not saved. That's not true. Your salvation is reliant on Jesus Christ alone. And what he did has truly when God made the covenant with Abraham, he put Abraham asleep and then made the covenant with himself. Right. I mean, it was going to be kept no matter what Abraham did. Abraham didn't have to keep the covenant at that point. Only God did. And see, if you put your faith in God, you might not keep the rest of that. You know, you might live your life terrible. But as long as your faith is in God, you'll spend eternity with him. You'll be saved. But what kind of life would you have? It'd be easy to be depressed. It'd be easy to be all these other things. God wants a full life for you. He wants you to build with pure gold, right? Something that will resi resist the fire, that will remain. That's what he wants for you. He wants the best for you. But we have to choose. Do we want to build with gold? It's all free. Or do we want to build with straw? It's free too. It just won't last. Anyways, you guys have a great week. I hope, man, if you're struggling with something, go to God. I hope you, you press into him. You seek him to help you with it. I hope you look to what, who he is in his heart for your life. That you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Right? That you seek him in everything. Because he's not going to let you down. Anyways, have a great week. And I'll speak to you next week.